Mahadev, uh, my name is Raj Sandar. Uh, I'm a product line manager at Wireless Land Business Unit. Um, I'll be talking about uh, Zebra Insight. This is our network analytics platform. Um, so I'm going to give a quick uh, overview of the product and uh, the, the controllers on which we support this, and, and then take you, walk you through a demo. And then if you have further time on that, we'll also you know, uh, dig into you know, what's behind the scenes on that. We'll, you know, we'll under the hood what it is. Okay. So Insight is, uh, Zebra Insight is our network analytics platform. So it provides the uh, visibility into the network. Uh, so basic monitoring capabilities um, and then real-time analytics. And we also you know, build some uh, troubleshooting tools uh, that are centralized. And uh, another key feature that we have added is the ability to do custom dashboards. So the monitor screens acts as a set of dashboards to monitor real-time your network. Uh, but we believe that uh, you know, there are different roles within the organization, like uh, IT help desk support user, and then you have uh, you know, network architect or network engineer, and then you have the IS manager or the CIO. So the insight provides visibility of the network for every device uh, at, the, at the client level, access point level, or aggregated at a site or system wide and then for every role, like help desk user, uh, your architect, as well as the IS manager. And the key, uh, one of the focus for Zebra Insight is, as uh, Mahadev uh, pointed out, our distributed architecture. So typical, our customers are, you know, large distributed retail and, uh, you know, transportation logistics, which runs, you know, access points uh, ten, north of 10,000 access points on a, on a, on a given network. Uh, so one of the priorities for us is to scale and perform at scale. So the, uh, the key features on this product, so ability to visualize your network real time and, you know, provides a real time view of the network. And uh, so we also store, we collect uh, historical data and store it for longer durations of time. So we provide some you know, real-time trend analytics on that. And uh, it also includes um, interactive floor map tools. So you have the ability to visualize you know, your network on a floor map and also look at you know, where the clients are. And, uh, you know, and it actually doubles up as a troubleshooting tool as well. And as part of troubleshooting tools, is uh, packet capture, remote uh, debug log for wireless, as well as you know the standard tools like ping and trace route. All that can be launched from your browser, irrespective of you know where your edge network is. Okay. And uh, we talked about the dashboard, so that I'll walk you through those as well. Um, the other, uh, since we collect historical data on this and perform trend analytics, you have the ability to you know, rewind and look at, you know, replay those events. So the insight is currently supported on our uh, high-end controllers today. So the NX uh, platform, which is, so we have uh, two uh, versions of that, uh, the NX 9500 and 9600. Uh, so they each support up to you know 10,000 access points in terms of scale. Uh, they also you know you can inside can coexist along with you know the standard wing man wing management application that runs on these controllers, and this still still will support up to you know 10,000 access points on that. Um, so for larger scale needs, so we have a VX platform, which is uh, you know a virtualized platform that runs on you know standard hypervisors like ES ESXi or uh, other uh, hypervisors, and that can scale up to you know 100k access points. Okay. What would the resource configuration be for that? Uh, so it depends on the scale requirement. So as if you're going to do 100,000. So for 100,000, so we're looking at uh, probably 24 to 32 core CPUs, um, or two or three processors with uh, that many cores, and then we are looking at about uh, 128 to 256 gig of RAM. And uh, for every 10,000 APs, you're looking at about 3,000 IOPS on the storage. So light requirements. Say it again? So easy requirements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, so insight can be deployed, uh, you know, in a couple of ways. One, it coexists along with your, you know, the, the Wing management platform, so it runs on the same physical hardware where you run uh, run the Wing uh, Wing controller, and it is launchable. Uh, as an application from the Wing interface, that's one option. So in this case, you know there is a limit, so we scale up to 10,000 access points in this. So if you have multiple NX clusters, where you have, you know, uh, some of our customers are, you know, north of, you know, 50, 60,000 access points, so they might have multiple NX clusters. They have to run it uh, separately, right? So what we are doing now is also, you know, the ability to run you know, take out the Zebra Insight piece and run it on, uh, you know, separate, you know, VX hardware or on a, on a VMs. And uh, in this case, you know, whether you are doing a hierarchical management with our NX, NX controllers where you have tens of thousands of APs uh, being managed by it. So we can have multiple of these NX clusters all, you know, talking to the, you know, Zebra Insight server. And there could be, you know, smaller branches uh, where you have either a, you know, local controller or controllerless deployment in some other branches. So all this can, you know, use the same, and we will provide decentralized visibility for that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to switch. Any questions on this so far? Any uh, public cloud options for your virtualized appliances, AWS? So we are the so the VX can be the can be hosted on a public cloud like uh, AWS or VM cloud. So in fact, uh, all of our testing is done on you know AWS as well. We also use a VMware cloud. Yes. Okay. Uh, but this is uh, the underlying technology is you know, it uses cloud technologies. We'll we'll talk when we talk about the under the hood. We'll talk about that. And uh, so we are working on our cloud platform. So we have a cloud, hosted cloud service that is running today, oh. but we'll also be offering, uh, you know, an updated uh, cloud service that will leverage this platform. Yeah. Is that going to be similar to the VX9000? No. So this that will be architected or built from ground up on uh, on public cloud services. Oh, okay. Yeah. How is there a time frame on that? Uh, so we're looking at uh, H1 end of Q1. Yeah. First half of 2016. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, it would be Q1 by end of Q1 2016. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. 